반갑습니다. 네, 안녕하세요. 저는 크립토 서울 대표 강현정입니다. 네, 저는 그 미더블 많이 주관하고 있는데요. 그러니까 해외 프로젝트들이 한국에 왔을 때 이제 소개해 주는 역할을 많이 하고 있고 그래서 미더블들을 많이 주최를 하고 있습니다. 어, 저 수많은 팀들을 많이 해 봤는데 두 번째 한 팀들이 많지 않아요. 그러니까 작년에 사실 포커다 팀을 처음 만났었고 그 미더블도 참석했었고 다시 이제 올해 또 하게 돼서 너무 영광이고요. 어, 이번에는 포커다 팀이 엄청 많이 출동을 했어요. 그래서 제가 컨퍼런스 사실 어제 끝났거든요. 비둘이라고 제가 컨퍼런스를 했는데 어, 그것 때문에 이제 지금 팀, 팀 전체가 와서 발표도 하고 워크샵도 열고 그랬었거든요. 그래서 그거와 일관되는 이제, 이제 형태로 지금 위더블 하게 됐습니다. 그래서 어, 아무튼 너무 와주셔서 감사드리고 토요일인데 사실 토요일날 잘안 하는데 위더블 제가 예, 근데 이번에는 컨퍼런스 때문에 어쩔 수 없이 하게 되었습니다. 너무 감사드리고 어, 제첫 발표자를 소개해 드릴게요. 이제 전반적인 웹3에 대해서 소개를 해 주실 거고 이제 라이언 라이언 즈 카운슬 멤버고요. 이제 어 최근에는 예전에 직장은 이제 폴리체인이라는 폴리체인 캐피털, 네? 그래서 이랬었습니다. 아무튼 라이언에게 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. 감사합니다. Hi. Uh, so thanks, Erica, and um, for putting on such a great event this week, and 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 for this, um, and thanks to everybody else for for coming. Um, we appreciate having you out. I'm just going to talk quickly about the state of Web3. And um, uh, a kind of high-level overview of, of the Polkadot project and some other interesting projects being built in Web3. Um, so what is Web3? Uh, Web3 is Gavin Wood's vision for a decentralized serverless internet uh, where users have better control of their own privacy, uh, their own identity, their own financial accounts, and essentially their own uh, destiny. Um, leveraging peer-to-peer -peer decentralized networks and using uh, trustless incentivization through crypto economic design. Uh, we can basically recapture the internet from the, the cartel that dominates it from t uh, today. Um, so why do we call it Web3? So there is Web1, the era of static uh, HTML websites um, in, in the 90s, and then we kind of evolved beyond that into Web2, which was social and mobile and uh, there was more user interaction and user creation uh, online. It, it wasn't just sort of read only. Um, however, that has created an, a very intense uh, concentration of wealth and power on the internet. And uh, monetization of this model has mostly been through an advertising um, or a data mining um, business model. And then in, in Web3, we moved to decentralized applications built on um, you know, WASM virtual machines. Monetization is directly baked in at the protocol level, uh, user control of privacy and data, and a much better uh, distribution of wealth and power um, on the internet. Uh, and why does this matter? Uh, it matters because Web2 has failed us. Uh, a small majority of companies own the vast majority of, of cloud compute and cloud storage uh, on the internet. The FANGs own all of your data uh, and they commercialize it uh, the, uh, the way they, they see fit without uh, including you in any way, shape or form. Um, I often say that we shouldn't get services like Twitter and Facebook for free. We should be paid to use services like Facebook and Twitter. And in fact, if you think about it, um, if everybody is paid appropriately for their data on uh, these services, we could actually see the first attempt at uh, universal basic income. Um, and so, uh, as I mentioned before, Web 2 got the, 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 an interesting sort of dichotomy between Web 2 and Web 3 is Web 2 got user scale uh, right very easily. A lot of these platforms scaled very, very quickly and captured users. However, had difficulty, difficulty monetizing, and that's why they moved to this, this uh, still this advertising model that was, that was built in the 90s or, or, or data mining model. Um, Web3 has got monetization right through the advance of, of, of crypto assets, but is having difficulty scaling users. Um, and so some interesting sort of cultural elements of our, of our ecosystem. Um, it, it's our belief that governance is a, is a noble pursuit in and of itself. Um, On-chain governance is absolute, 
necessity as we move, move forward in our space. I would argue that um, the largest problems uh, within Bitcoin and Ethereum and the lack of, say, progress and evolution that we've seen in, in both of these protocols has been driven from uh, poor governance guidelines. And I, and I think that's, that's something that needs to change. Um, we need more experimentation uh, around governance models, but also um, around consensus mechanisms and, and privacy and, and a whole range of things. And we need certain isolated spaces in which we can experiment uh, without the fear of, of, of causing undue financial harm to, to people. Uh, and scalability, or the trilemma of scalability, privacy, and decentralization will mostly be tackled through no, novel approaches. And again, if we've got a culture of experimentation and pushing the, the ecosystem forward, uh, I, I think, for the most part, these, these issues are, are relatively solvable. Um, so enter Polkadot. Um, uh, Polkadot is the first um, project of, of the Web3 Foundation and uh, a very critical infrastructure component of, of Web3. Um, this is the connective tissue that will bring together uh, blockchains and, and, and cryptocurrency landscapes that today sit in silos. Um, it's completely ridiculous that we don't have communication, say, between the Ethereum network and the Tezos network and the Bitcoin network. Um, and Polkadot will be uh, the conduit that, that will allow that. Um, it's an incredibly ambitious project. And so where we see some interoperability projects focus on, say, the simple use case of cross-chain token transfer or value transfer, uh, Polkadot allows for arbitrary smart contract calls across chain and arbitrary messaging across chain. Um, this is incredibly powerful, a much more broad and um, technically ambitious goal. Uh, Hybrid consensus allows for fast finality along with uh, very robust security. Um, governance baked in at the protocol level that will evolve the protocol as well as evolve in, in the nature of the governance mechanism. Uh, and it's led by what, it, in my opinion, I've spent the last five years basically evaluating protocols and teams across the world. And in my opinion, um, this is the best team in the space. It's certainly the deepest technical bench in the space where most teams um, have, you know, four or five really strong blockchain engineers. The parity team is, I think, on the order of 55 deep of, you know, some of the leading minds in this space are really pushing uh, things forward. Uh, the parity team is probably the first that I know of to uh, very publicly recognize the movement of WASM VMs, uh, and, and now the whole space is, is moving in this direction. And so uh, it's an exciting project to be a part of uh, for all these factors. Um, and it's just sort of intellectually uh, creates this curiosity and, 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 and excitement uh, of those, or like those of us who are in this ecosystem. And it's somewhat similar feeling to the feeling that I felt in 2014 and early 2015 with the start of the, of the community around, around Ethereum. Um, so quick overview of uh, Polkadot. So you've got parachains, which would be say like Zcash or, or Ethereum or, or Bitcoin. Um, these are mostly you know, chains that will have some single use case or, or application or uh, some specific uh, you know, advantage either at the consensus mechanism or something else. They will connect to the relay chain, the, the primary chain of, uh, of Polkadot, either via, via bridge or by being a parachain uh, potentially built uh, using the substrate fabric and, uh, and then connecting directly into to the relay chain. You've got, um, it, it, in this parachain, we've got sort of collators, validators, fishermen, um, and I'll let the rest of the team get into to who, the, who those entities are, but you can kind of basically understand what the connection is between a parachain and then the, the main polka dot relay chain. Um, a great advantage here is parallelization of security. So in say, traditional blockchains like, like POW, if you can't really have security handle more than one chain. So you'd have to make divides and divide your resources um, as a result. With Polkadot, 
we, we avoid this. And so we can have massive scalability in, improvements through this parallelization of, of mining and security. Um, one of the things that I'm most excited about, about this project and a signal that as an investor in the space um, I take very, very seriously is a, a very aggressive roadmap. Um, uh, but more importantly, that this will be, uh, to my knowledge, the first major project in the history of our industry that will ship ahead of schedule. Um, no project in the history of our space has ever shipped on time. Uh, that is in part because of the vanguard nature of the technology. It's also in part because uh, of sort of the decentralized organizational structures and just lack of, uh, of technical leadership and management that, that we've seen. Um, however, we're expecting a Q3 uh, release of Polkadot mainnet. Um, and again, due to the technical leadership of, of this amazing team, uh, they're on track to, to deliver that. And so I'm incredibly excited. I think this is going to be the uh, you know, primary launch and announcement of 2019. That, that really defines the year. Uh, so cool stuff being built in um, Polkadot. Uh, so I mentioned Substrate uh, very quickly. Uh, so Substrate is a architecture for building parachains uh, using the best in-class technologies. You basically get your VM, which is a, the fastest WASM VM on the planet, plus a blockchain in a box, and then you can focus on say your consensus mechanism, or whatever makes your project uh, interesting and valuable and unique. And you don't have to recreate the wheel of the low level of the stack. Um, uh, so that's very interesting and that's uh, built by the Parity team. Um, another project that I'm involved in and uh, very, very excited about is Edgeware. So Edgeware is a governance test net with real financial incentives. One of the big problems that we've seen with, with test nets thus far is that nobody's participating on them because there, there's really nothing at stake. And so uh, there's no reason for a widespread group of, of participants to, uh, to be participating. But this will have a DAO that will control the rewards of the, um, of the block reward. And uh, you'll lock a certain amount of ETH and be able to get edge tokens and then you can participate in, in governance and sort of control how this, uh, this network evolves. Um, I'm very excited to see what we, uh, or, or to experiment different governance models, whether it's quadratic voting or, or uh, multi-level voting or various other things. And uh, again, built on substrate, deployable as a parachain on, on Polkadot very quickly. So you've got that VM and blockchain in a box and we can focus on what matters to us in Edgeware, which is uh, governance and testing new governance mechanisms. Uh, some other stuff that's out there real, that's re really interesting, so there's Pokascan and Pokasource, uh, LibP2P, which is a collaboration, or actually a project by Protocol Labs um, that, uh, that has partnered with, uh, with Polkadot. Um, you know, Zcash, Energy Web, Agoric is actually an interesting one. So Agoric is Mark Miller's um, JavaScript smart contract scripting platform. So Agoric will allow you to write uh, reasonably secure smart contracts in JavaScript. Uh, and that opens up uh, smart contract scripting to the 24 million JavaScript developers around the world. So that's kind of cool. Um, Blink is a, a DAG um, with uh, very fast transaction throughput, um, highly scalable DAG, uh, and an interesting approach to maybe eventually putting uh, smart contract scripting in there. Um, so there's a number of projects, which, again, as I mentioned, there's this migration of people who want to get away from the, the kind of toxic narrative and never ending debates of many ecosystems or many communities um, that we're in today and sort of just get back to experimentation and building and, uh, and, and focusing on, on evolution of the space. Um, and, though, you know, and those of us who are not tribalistic, those of us who are sort of you know, blockchain minimalists who are just focused on the technology, this is really the community for you. Um, and uh, this community is thriving. 
So, and growing every day, it's global, um, and you know, this is an example of that. And uh, if you want to reach out, get involved, um, participate, um, this is my contact and the contact of the organization, and um, uh, more than welcome to, you know, to uh, reach out to us and um, talk about ideas and just jam on concepts, and we'll be here uh, today and tomorrow, and um, uh, looking forward to connecting with all of you. Thanks. Thank you.